there's not really much Teddy Ruxpin, the Teddy Ruxpin adventure in the con. So here it is. And I'm wearing the cowboy hat just to throw everyone off. Because I am the magical space wizard. Ilya, space wizard. He's Lily Kelly wearing the cowboy hat. And uh, yes, up so space. So, yes. Iliop is a planet far from Earth. In another realm. Space. And, 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 and uh, yeah. It's a land of, of, of fuzzy creatures. It's kind of like the Muppet planet. Uh, ooh, they're all fuzzy. And... Uh, and they tell stories to, to, to them. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's what Iliop is, you see. So. <laughs> On his adventure. Uh, it's been well over 30 years since Teddy was on Earth. Uh, so he returns and uh, discovers a uh, Star Trek convention, or fandom convention, where there are creatures similar to him. That is, furries. And the furries are, uh, yes, clearly some sort of offshoot of the uh, <laughs> whole thing, which is why Silly Kelly goes in disguise as a furry at one point in order to, to communicate with them. Yes. Earn their trust or something. Uh, so yeah. That Come dream with me tonight. Let's go to far off places and search for treasures bright. Come dream with me tonight. Now I'm going to cut to the footage of of him returning through the space bridge. Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense. Come dream with me tonight. Uh, yeah. Let's go to far off places and search for treasures bright. Come dream with me tonight. <laughs> May 24, 2019. The Fanime 25th anniversary. Silly Kelly. And I have uh, I have a uh, yeah, Teddy in here. <laughs> so here we are. Let's get tickets. Well, yeah. All right, so we are in the convention hall. There was some audio playing, and this is Silly Kelly, and this is Teddy Backspin, and uh, <laughs> we're at the event anyway. Uh, I was talking about there not being a line con, the, the, uh, no line con. I uh, went right in. Um, that, that, there, there was a thing called line con for many years, up until about 2014. I uh, did something different. Um, uh, I did uh, Bacon and Fanime, 2013, 2014, 2015. Last Bacon was 2015. So, in the game room, we have um, some Fanime since then. This is uh, four years later. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, we've been doing them. Um, 
the yeah the stories who in, invited us originally to Tana May uh, haven't gone since they did that, uh, and they're not here this time. Even though later on there's Ghostbuster people. Hmm. Well, so it's like we're going to Iliop and uh, the planet of the Teddy Ruxpin people, and uh, and then we gone to Earth. Yeah, it didn't really that didn't really pan out actually. Uh, we can certainly do something like that, but uh, didn't really pan out. So, um, ended up just being convention coverage. Uh, I, I can certainly make two movies out of this. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can make two movies out of this. But yes, uh, actually, um, <laughs> here we are and. Um, over here and there's like nothing, no sound back here. Yeah, because there's nothing going on. Yeah. So, hmm, a taco mama after that, uh, that was lunch. Uh, I'm gonna go to the Bunny Senpai movie. But first, I wanna check out what's in uh, the hotel. Your edification. That duffel bag was not an airship. <laughs> this way. Go watch that bunny senpai thing. Ah, I'll just sleep here. Yeah. And then I shall use my magical powers to make this duffel bag float. It really won't be, but yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> and I are in here making a move film. I got this here Teddy Ruxpin. He's floating along this here. Oh, I just broke the fourth wall. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing going on in up here. I'm gonna go see the bunny simpop. So yeah, there's two of us here. Tomorrow, fuzzy face, be dressed up like sort of like a cat bear dude. Yeah. So that'll be funny. So let's uh, down here. Yep. <laughs> the police are gonna come up here. Dude, what is that? Stop them! Come on. Roughly, <laughs> where the Spider-Man kid. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so at the convention we have, um, yeah, outside at the at the con, various characters and a gargoyle type of thing, and yeah, uh, it's uh, it's definitely in, in interesting, but but less. Uh, uh, it was uh, there was less uh, people emphasizing the 
yeah, the other less people emphasizing the 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 inter swap thing. Um, yeah, there there weren't as many people uh, being being in drag. Actually, not hardly at all. Here's Teddy Raxpin trying to get him to walk. You can see it didn't work. Because, yeah, it really, really, really didn't work. And I, I just showed it with the hand in the background so you could see why it really, really, really didn't work. So you can see, uh, that did not work. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Since the Kelly, Silly Kelly voice is similar to the voice of the teddy bear anyway. Isn't where he got it originally, the voice, the Kelly, Kelly Lux voice. Uh, somebody thought that he was the guy. I think that was on day two. But in this one, now uh, we have some Pokemon characters. And uh, there's the Wario guy who shows up later, so he's everywhere. And I didn't mean for that to look like a, 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 uh, sort of a habit. It's not. Um, it, it's not. Uh, there's a furry. So, yes. Excellent. So, yeah. Uh, it's just a jacket. It was supposed to be the kid who would be king. Anyway, so, it didn't. But he's got, like, a teddy bear. He's not really dead. He just looks kind of dead. <laughs> <laughs> but he's dead. Definitely. You know what? I don't think we're on Iliop anymore. Ooh, I kind of flubbed that line. Does not dream of bunny girl senpai. Okay, yeah. Uh, this is me discussing um, the wrong voice, incidentally. And yeah, there was who's in the background. Uh, the, the, yeah, uh, Rascal doesn't dream of bunny senpai, which is senpai means teacher. Actually, not girl. Uh, it's like sensei, but like older, like teacher, but not quite sensei. It's senpai. Um, uh, and the joke was that she was a teacher, supposedly, but she looked like him, so it didn't really. It's like a, a strange little movie uh, about a guy who befriends a girl who was disappearing, which is kind of like a reverse Cillian, in that in that her, the illusions of the town sort of make. Somebody that's famous and that's no longer famous disappear, whereas the Calcat and the Cillians and the, the various those characters in that story are the opposite of that in that they make themselves appear. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, this is a very anime idea, and yeah, I'm pretty much going over this this odd story about this, and and, and it's funny how the Japanese story was a uh, it does have a lot of suggestive stuff and material. In it. But uh, yeah, and then, and then they and then they get freaked out when they get called out on uh, suggested material. Yeah. Anyway, so that were now we're out the uh, various characters, the convention. Uh, it looks like back in the game room, possibly, or is it the dealer's room? Yes, yeah, it's the dealer's room. No, no, maybe it was the dealer's room. Uh, yeah. So there is a Macross person. I think it's a Macross person. Macross Delta, newer one. It's actually kind of cool. Um, yeah, and I, and I got to see that too, but that was later. Uh, yeah, I'm giving away stuff that happened later. Hmm, yes. Well, it's like the other stuff that was going on wasn't uh, conducive of you know, uh, Captain Marvel and Captain America. And there is Teddy Ruxpin looking kind of horrified, or possibly, like, scared. <laughs> well, actually, ah, ah, I saw others of my kind. I was excited. There, there's a, a kitty key. Well, not really. Um, yeah, it's a gunsmith cat, I think. Uh, or a uh, gunmetal cat, or one of those other ones. It's not gunsmith cats. It's not. Um, yeah, cat girl. But that was something later, too. It was the uh, protesters. Anyway, so we have, uh... We have sort of a walkthrough, various characters. Yeah, I don't know a lot of the animation characters that they're doing. Sure. Uh, um, yeah, and don't know what they're trying to be. I don't know this character, but it's interesting looking. 
So here we have Game of Thrones, possibly. Yeah. Now some people might come. To, now some people are talking about costuming. Oh, there's a furry. Excellent, my little pony furry. And and he's Deadpool. <laughs> but yeah, the costuming and shaming thing. It's like people criticizing their costuming technique. It's like, like why? Like how would how would they know? I don't know. And they're like, it's like that's like going to an art gallery and saying, oh, this this you know, this artwork is not exactly what I would do. It's like yeah, what kind of what kind of a weird criticism is that? It's like yeah, but you can't do better. I mean, the response. <laughs> oh yeah, I can do better, but I won't. It's, and the kid would be king thing that I was wearing from that movie that no one saw. Uh, somebody did get it. <laughs> They're like, oh, it's a kid king or king Arthur movie, right? So yeah, there was at least one person in that got it. <laughs> the jacket looked very similar. Oh, there's another one. There's another furry. Maybe the stories were there the whole time in fur costumes. That'd be awesome. I don't think so, but that'd still be awesome. And those things are really warm too when those happen. <sighs> now that is a green Deadpool in a in a Mexican outfit, which is is funny. So there's there's a couple of Deadpools, and it is true that they do in fact reproduce at conventions. Other nerds. Uh, they date each other. There's the Mario and War uh, another Mario and Mario. It's a different different guys, Mario and Luigi. And uh, they, they, yeah, they sort of opposite the part there. Somebody might complain and say, "Oh, he's not big enough to be Luigi." Is like, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's like like this uh, Game of Thrones. And a, uh, there's a gunsmith cat there. Uh, this was the carrot juice. This was unusual. Um, so, so here we had carrot juice and cake, and this weird cake. That yeah, don't get carrot juice at uh, Boulangerie, a la Boulange. Uh, uh, <laughs> don't do that in the future. Um, <laughs> oh no! So yeah, uh, there's that uh, margarine worker's hat. Um, the Bichon Bakery Cafe. Well, it's not sponsored by anything. Oh, San Jose State got a champion thing. Take a picture in front of it. Because I went there. <laughs> yeah. And then I discussed it. Yeah. Yeah, so apparently the, the Spartans did actually win a football game. Remarkable. Uh, that's where I went to call. Uh, class of 98 and class of 2008 uh, had nothing to do with the football team. They apparently won this year. Mm. <laughs> well, they won more than a game. They won the championship. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, so, and I don't have a shirt from that. Probably should get one. <laughs> Probably can't find one at this point. Um, yeah, we're out back at the convention. Um, it's just sort of an odd camera angle there. I just don't think I knew what I was doing. Um, yeah, there's there's no sharking or anything. <laughs> I just didn't know what I was doing. Uh, maybe to film the ground. There's some interesting weird stuff, but yeah. I was a taiko drum guy. I cut out the audio for this because... What if he's that good that it, that, you know, and, and it flags me? Because it probably will. Um, so I, I clipped it out. Um, yeah, so I didn't want YouTube to flag me. Somebody else has probably recorded it. So it's, yeah, go there, watch theirs. Um, let's see.
And yeah, more of the con. Back, no sound, so I recorded this part. Let's hear some of it. Night. Yeah, so so the trick of the I think it's Game of Thrones again. Or it's a Fortnite. It's a Fortnite, that's right. That's what he said. Uh Falling around these room. I didn't want to just film shots of people's backs and stuff. But uh kind of cutting in here on occasion. Okay. So yeah, we're we're still uh in the dealer's room. Um and yeah, there's uh the percentage of men to women was at least sixty percent women. Uh, less event uh, proving that they do in fact have girls that are totally nerds that come to conventions and dress up in anime and stuff. And, and, and there was a there was a panel where a guy was trying to impress a, a con person in the audience he was trying to impress a girl by getting to briefly know enough anime to go to the anime convention with her. <laughs> and that doesn't work uh, yeah so there's that <laughs> Yeah, uh, if you don't know enough, you're, you're, it's not going to work. So, yeah. And I don't know enough, so it hasn't worked. So, yeah. So, it wasn't me, but I'm just saying. Um, it's just, yeah, and that shouldn't be the barometer of it anyway. It should be rather whether you, whether somebody, whether you like the person and they like you or not. It shouldn't matter what you're into, necessarily, unless he's into some weird shit he didn't talk about. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, some cool lithograph thingies. Looks like upside down. Thirteen. Yeah, they'd be kids. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um. So some fuzzy creatures. I bought some fuzzy toys. Incidentally, the store of the fuzzy toys that I bought them from on the th fourth day were is actually out of business. So apparently, they're all online or something. There's that cat thing again. Oh, so yeah, there's a lot of Pokemon people. I don't know what that is. Yeah, Pokemon. <laughs> that was invented by a guy with autism. Yeah. But he's making millions, so he's clearly also a really business savvy guy with autism. Oh, <laughs> uh, so yeah. Unlike the Cal Cat show, also done by sorry, with autism, uh, which doesn't have any um, any uh, doesn't make any revenue off these videos, it, uh, really at all. Uh, I'd have to have more than eighty viewers, uh, but I have a lot of people that viewed them, though, so they should uh, subscribe and like my channel, so that I can have thousands of viewers, and then I can be. <laughs> There's some interesting bloopers. I'm going to leave them in, though, because they add some interesting film-the-floor-first clarity to this thing. Um, yeah. So, uh, that looked a bit like the Megan. I don't think it was, though. From the church group. But it wasn't. Um, nor did I see uh, the pagets. They weren't here there. So we looked a little like him, but they weren't. And the lady with the fox tail wasn't there. And, and the lady with the permeates wasn't there either. So there was like, uh, yeah, a bunch of other swords. You always wonder how you get those on a train. I imagine you'd have to order them and then get your friend to take them off the premises in their car. That's what I guessed last year. Uh, because you can't take that on a plane. Uh, there's, uh, yes, uh, off-world uh, shirts. Uh, not a sponsor. Uh, oh, we just bought a lot of shirts from them. They also do the con shirts. Uh, yeah. And there's a TV. The TV person was updated so that the screen actually had, like, moving parts. The Pocky, I'm going to mention the Pocky in a minute on here. It's not Pot. It, he's just being weird. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm now leaving the dealer's room for this here special edible packing. Oh, 
slow down to watch the boobies. This special pack. Yep. I really want to get a bean shirt. Uh, for some reason, the cowpoke walked into the studio there. Here's a Clint cowpoke, and there's the furry and the girl. Maybe that's no, that's not true. That'd be interesting. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe that's her. No, although, but here's a monster. Excellent. Good. Which one's the creature? I can't tell. Ha ha ha. No. Oh, no, it's kidding. Um. So I haven't eaten the Pocky yet. I didn't read the panels right. And I guess I'm going to go with the Artist Alley a little bit and then go to the 4 o'clock panel because I didn't really read the other ones right. It's half over. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. Con thingies. And Cow Poke was in there. He was looking around about and all, and he had a cameo because he was there. So, uh, yeah, I never did eat the Pocky at the convention. I ate it later. It's kind of a useless thing. <laughs> I kept forgetting the snacks I was eating. At least on day one. Uh, I kept running into that, that weird melty guy, so I took his picture. I got his permission, of course. That's a dude in that, incidentally. I th think it's a wuzzle, maybe? <laughs> it's something Dr. Susie in, I think. That's what that is. Looks like a wuzzle. It's interesting looking. It's probably not, but it kind of reminds me of one. Because if it's supposed to be the guy from the tree movie, that, that's Orin. Um, yeah, so here we have the art gallery. I don't know what's going on in there. And uh, there's a, is that a Winnie the Pooh? Sort of a half Winnie the Pooh. Now, there's somebody could critique the costume. They could say, that's not really fully on Winnie the Pooh. That's sort of a Christopher Robin disguised as Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> that's different. Like he's trying to go in incognito or something. Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the shit. Yep. So, here we have... What is that? So anyway, here we are at the con, jumping to 30 minutes, 46 seconds, and uh, and yeah, the the, uh, the art gallery, looking out on the windows, and uh, Teddy Ruxpin really hasn't appeared at all, just briefly, kind of because the other stuff kind of overshadowed him. It was like, yeah, he was totally going to appear, and he's, like, he became a MacGuffin. <laughs> There it's he is. Really <laughs> it's not really gonna talk. Oh, this is uh, Yes, um, my eyes are screwed up as you can tell. Ah, uh, this is gonna be the freakiest thing ever. Ah, uh, I hope Kelly knows where he's going. Gonna crash. <laughs> that was probably not. Ah, uh, so here we have, he's discussing the convention afterward, after the fact. Day one is ending, and that's the end of day one. And, yeah. Um, and, uh, there we are. Well, this has been an interesting con experience. Here I am as a teddy bear. Ah, it could be worse. Ah. <laughs> no, it was okay. It was fine. Yeah. So yeah, more of the convention stuff and panels and and things. Doesn't seem to be up in the room at all. Okay, so it's about five. And that was in the Super Dimension Forker's Macross panel, of course. Some kind of a Macross Star Trek person. But also 
I have a Teddy Ruxpin. Anyway, so, um, uh, uh, yeah, they, they, uh, oh, there's my hand. So, yeah, um, they pretty much confirmed that the Japanese version of Robotech called Macross, uh, at the very end, afterward I asked them, they pretty much confirmed that, that at the end, yes, the Japanese one does not mention Rick Hunter at all, it's Jupiter section. It's Jupiter expedition, it has nothing to do with Rick Hunter. So that cliffhanger at the end of Robotech, with Rick Hunter not coming home, did not happen. <laughs> Confirmed by the Robotech Macross guy. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 yeah. So your so my fan film is well the, uh, accurate for the American version, but definitely not the Japanese Macross version, which I knew. Oh. <laughs> so that was anime manga for parents. Uh, panel. It was five. Uh, concerning, I guess. Uh, uh, whether anime, some anime is appropriate or not for children, basically. Uh, he didn't specify exactly what wasn't, so, yeah, oh, there's that. Uh, I'm not familiar with a lot of the stuff he did mention, so maybe they would know immediately if they knew what he was talking about. The next is, uh, expand cosplay is not for content. I'm gonna go to that. Six is coming up right now. Um, I'm not filming in there, of course. Up, oh, I'm, I'm not filming in there, of course. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, yeah, I was discuss I was mentioning that in the preview, so I go to it. I'm videoing myself. Oh yeah, see, that's on me. Yeah. So uh, that was um, a panel of Beyond the Costume and Consent, uh, a sequel to the one five years ago. Uh, uh, two different people. There were two guys on the panel. Uh, one of the guys was from the other one. Uh, yeah, so it was quite different than the one a couple years ago. Uh, mainly they talked about photographers and fake photographers. But they didn't stop it. Oh well. <laughs> Basically. Alright. That's the end of the slideshow. Uh, uh, this, of day one slideshow. So I got on the Alum Rock train first, and, and it stopped at Civic Center, and they they like broke off the cars, and they were like gonna go broke off the cars, and then and then and then the train started acting funny because they were trying to like separate the cars, and then this this crazy guy gets on. And this other crazy guy gets like trapped outside of the train and the train doors are going <laughs> and finally he screams at the train <laughs> he calls the train a bitch <laughs> what <laughs> they open the door to the train <laughs> they wouldn't let him in so, so i'm gonna get off this train and go on to the other train the alum rock train instead of the mountain view one that i was on where it was possessed and there were crazy people and one of the crazy people got on the alum rock train with no crazy but he got off but there was a cop cars following the trains all the way down. I don't know what that was about. They didn't stop it. Oh well. <laughs> Welcome to Fanime Con uh, 2019, day two. I'm here at the convention once more. It is day two of Fanime Con, and uh, let's go in and see what's going on. <laughs> Fanime Con 2019, the uh, 25th, and uh, yeah, no music out. I don't need to worry about the YouTube. Yeah, so yeah, um, uh, I got on the Uber. It made more sense. I also have put everything in his bag. <laughs> your nerddom in concert and it will be a level after which I'll go to the backyard yeah. Yeah. and then after that there might be other panels and then after that stop ladies the teddy bears in a bag yeah. 
to get him out later. Well, soon, I guess. Yeah, sooner than later. Cause we got a little while to mess around. And it, it does have a line pond. We're gonna have uh, uh, Sarah and Michael here on Monday. We might not see them. A lot of people here. So, yeah, there was a little music in this scene. They were doing a program on the scenes there. Uh, and uh, I'm here with Werewolf Fuzzy Face and Clint Cowpoke on day two. Mmm, this is very Serbian and it's whatnot. Uh, I was there and uh, in a convention dealing dealing things that were mysterious and mystical. And also uh, Teddy Ruxpin. Uh, yes, Teddy Ruxpin. Um, yes, so, uh, yes, apparently, you know, they, too, featured some kind of funky people. Uh, briefly, the, uh, yeah, the cosplay's consent video from the day before, and that they did not go over the harassment thing, because they figured everybody that was in the room was already knew that. What they went over was, uh, mainly the creepy photographer's that have expensive cameras running around, uh, and uh, some of them are not actually legit. They're actually just want to get scantily clad women and take pictures of them surreptitiously. Uh, they're pretending to be photographers. Yeah, uh, we do not do that, of course. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, but but uh, yeah, but, you know, some of them they're, they're there, uh, and they're really obvious. Uh, yeah, yeah. So if anyone the convention says, uh, come up to my hotel room for a private shoot. Don't do it. Unless you want to have sex in your hotel room. If you're into that, I wouldn't. Anyway, so uh, we're coming to the end of that clip there. And, uh, yeah, so there's a, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, so, yeah, if you don't want to end up being date raped by creepy photographers, yeah, don't, don't. Don't go anywhere with them without your posse with you. Yeah. So that's mainly what they talked about. And, and, and inclusion in cosplay and that kind of thing. So, yeah, as a inclusion, in other words, uh, minority characters in cosplay. Good idea. Uh, sure. Uh, oddly enough, that uh, the, the Macross movie that came on the next day didn't include many minorities. Uh, but, as you know, uh, you have your cosplay and, and you have your... Uh, it's a Hero Academia character. Maybe. Was it Twilight? No, it's a Hero Academia. And then we have some, uh, I think you got a picture of those guys the last time, too. Yeah, like twice. Oh, well. <laughs> they were interesting looking. Oh, yeah. So, the, yeah. So, uh, going on from there. And, yeah, it's, uh, that's not today, so let's go to, uh, But there was a weird guy at this one that was, uh, thought it was the voice, uh, I knew the voice of Teddy Ruxpin and could get him an autograph, which uh, I can't, because uh, I don't, I don't know him. Uh, here's the swords again. Uh, there was also weird con people at previous panels. Yeah, there was a panel discussion, but... It was about other conventions, so I kind of left that out uh, about what they discussed because it wasn't about bacon. It wasn't about fanime. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. So. Yeah. Um. Sure. <laughs> oh, well, well, fuzzy face. Uh, the Legend of the, the Final Yomato movies. Uh. Yes. Cali Cat used to watch them with Tim and us with Tim Cantrell. I uh, used to watch many of all, the, all of them, and when they were Star Blazers as well. He had the Yomato on video cassette. They did do a couple of DVD runs of that. Uh, uh, you can't get them anymore. I should have got them at the time. Uh, they, uh, but they've done remakes, and this one was a remake. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, um, it was okay. Uh, I, I really don't need to own it, uh, other than oh, they do the Common Empire again. It's like okay. Kind of already did that years ago. The whole idea that the spaceship takes them a year to cross to another galaxy to get to Gamelons is kind of silly. Because this is like a galaxy 
Really? Another freaking galaxy? Why would the Gamelons need Earth? They have another galaxy to explore. Not a solar system, a galaxy. Ah, some of these animes, I don't know. <laughs> and of course, it's the Omato, the heroic battleship from World War II, which uh, the Allies sunk in the Pacific. It gets turned into a spaceship and fly around. No, no, Teddy Ruxpin likes this kind of thing because he likes airships. Ooh, yes, they did not have one that I could fly away. Yes. Yes, um, yes, there were rather some special people. And look at these little figurines, aren't they nice? Um, uh, but yes, uh, yeah, uh, so there's a robot. It's just his own creation, is what it is. Yeah, an Ultraman. Oh, it's either Carmen San Diego, somebody in the church, or it's something from something else that just looks like it a little bit. I'm guessing it just looks like it a little bit. Yeah, and here we have some sword play uh, action pose. They did ask permission, so yeah, I did ask permission. <laughs> we did have permission. Yeah. Um, uh, there's the Jack Sparrow guy. I think I got picture of at least two of those guys dressed like the, there's a the Pirates of the Caribbean thing going on. So, why not? And then see the, his uh, significant other who was the uh, White Queen of Death. Which is kind of funny. Uh, and here we have the... the, the there, was a, there was a picture, of course, that was deleted from this one. In which uh, there was a back side and I wasn't trying to get that. Yeah, so I, I showed them that I deleted it. Anyway, here's a girl from uh, Game of Thrones. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, there's uh, Attack Dummy. <laughs> Not really. Um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, um, that was the inclusion in, in in nerddom panel. I'm going to the backyard now. That's a Caribbean fight. Uh, yeah, so mainly it was about kind of what that other panel last night was about. Uh, yeah, so yeah, uh, stuff like inclusion, but not pandering and not being like like weird. <laughs> Uh, uh, accepting people for their costumes, and even if their costume isn't like, like on point, why would why would you comment on why there's a flaw in it? Makes sense. Uh, uh, yeah. So that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. And there was a lot of talk about rap and hip hop, but I don't know that scene, so I got nothing on that. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So that was pretty much that. Uh, the uh, there was. Uh, uh, some of the people in the con asked about. Uh, uh, apparently, at a convention at some point, it was a fan anime, there was a, uh, a, a jerk dealer who apparently, a uh, flasher, uh, who was accusing people that want to buy his stuff of racism, even though. <laughs> and this, is, this is one of the guys saying that. It was like, what about somebody that accuses you of something you didn't do? Well, yeah, yeah film it. Yeah. Contact the, you know, do an email to the, to the convention. But that wasn't here, that was last year. Somebody mentioned that account. Anyway, so, yeah, uh, just, just be, be good to people. Yeah, so, anyway, so I'm going to go on to the uh, yeah, so. Yeah, so, the, the, uh, just a quickie that the panel was consisting of African American people. Uh, and um, well, that wasn't unusual, but uh, but uh, also the the uh, the um, one of, one of the one of the people mentioned a, uh, a, a Final Fantasy eleven, not not Final Fantasy, um, Mortal Kombat eleven, references like SJW and woke, and 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 then like in the in that universe, slavery gets defeated or something, which is a fantasy thing. Uh, the only objection I would see to that is that it dates the story as like taking place in 2019 instead of a fantasy world where 
yeah, why, yeah. <laughs> it's not going to make any sense like three years from now. It's going to be like, oh, let's, it would be like, like back in the 90s when they like reference like, like, oh, these characters are all emo. They're going to be like, what's that? You know, it's so that <laughs> I was like, well, I, yeah, it's, it's gonna date the story. It's like, okay, this took place in the 90s. It has emos. <laughs> it just, just doesn't work as a, as a plot device. It's not that it doesn't work because of the connotation. It just doesn't work because it's a bad plot device. It's just that woke. Uh, okay. Nah, no. Hmm. Well, I went to the back of yard. Hmm. Although the cashew lady was kind of crabby, I deliberately was not crabby back. She eventually enjoyed being the cashier. And now, there's a burp for you. Now, at the backyard. I'm gonna put the fursuit on now. So yeah, um some manga characters from probably one of the uh, uh, Studio Ghibli and then we come to uh, video game characters it's from a video game and then uh, this guy I don't know who the heck this guy is what this guy kept showing up everywhere he's wearing his funny ears uh, he's looking silly like a Chewbacca made it with a mog from Spaceballs. They had a kid. <laughs> and then we got Teddy Backspin. Uh, what was I thinking? I have no idea what I was thinking. <laughs> uh, there we go. Hello, about me. And the Teddy Backspin. Okay, now we got the, the Teddy Backspin set up. And now, I'm going to go walk, do the stroll. So you see me. It's not technically an airship. It's more of a hot rod. <sighs> uh. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so, um, well, uh, we couldn't make my character walk, so we had to put him in a big cart. Unfortunately, the big cart kept getting snagged on by people's feet. Uh, it, yeah, it, it was either behind me or in front of me. It, was, it made it worse somehow. And, and people kept plowing into it like flat tire. like. And even though they saw it, they just weren't paying attention, I guess. And, and usually they said, excuse me, oh, but... I don't think they wanted to. I think they were kind of mad about that. And then here's a, a, a sort of a, a, a kitty key with a fur head. That's kind of awesome. Yeah, that's another uh, knight person. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, well, and there's Clint Calpo. Somebody's, somebody's mopping up. Yeah, there was more security on day two. I don't think they could have handled it if anything bad happened. It wasn't going to, of course. It's stupid, because everybody was rather indifferent, but, <laughs> I think it's kind of insane, this whole ship thing. Yeah, so here's, here's, here's me, and I'm talking about fancy things. So yeah, the, uh, yeah, so I was saying how meta this was to be dressed, uh, have a sort of a teddy bear-like suit and have a teddy bear in a, in a cart. They probably thought I was Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs or something. Really crazy or meta or something. But I was clearly uh, socially aware in the situation, so I clearly wasn't crazy. I was just a, like a method actor. Once they realized this, they were okay with it. So yeah, we've got the characters doing things they shouldn't cast. And also, hopefully they can't hear my, uh, I don't remember this. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, there's, um, space uh, critter, oh, then somebody hit the bag again. Yeah, they just walked right over, and then the next guy walked over, right? It was like, pfft, Yeah, every time the thing jerked, somebody, somebody kicked it. 
Somebody inevitably kicked it. I suppose it shouldn't have been behind me, but, uh, yeah. Didn't work out too well. Uh, that doesn't really work. Pointing out some kind of a panel, but I forget which one. A Teddy Ruxpin panel. Talking into the phone. And it's funny. Because, like, he's just, like, bizarre and everything. Ooh, there's a guy who looks kind of like Tim back there, but it isn't. Because he wouldn't be at this, I don't think. Oh, what happened there? Oh, well, I'll leave it. Oh, so here's some pictures that were taken officially. Yes, with permission. There was a, quite a few Captain Marvels there. Including, at one point, a dude Captain Marvel chick. Which is actually canon. He was a, do he was a guy at one point. He's only, he only recently is a, is a chick. Yeah, he was like Shazam, but he was Captain Marvel. So another, another, another guy. Yeah. But no, there's a chick. Somebody took my picture. See, there's, somebody has the, yeah, my picture. This actually created a, a, a bit of a, bit of a character thing, and they noticed me in this thing. But it was really hot in it. So yeah, that's. A I'm gonna go into the Star Blazers thing. And uh, earlier, one of those protester guys was, was there and the thing, and filming me. And, um, and uh, so the protester guy was there, and I was like, <laughs> and, I said, and I turned off to the side and said, Jesus didn't say anything about costuming. <laughs> and then later on, there was one up there in the promenade up there, walking along. It was all, all repent sinners for costuming stuff, and I said right to him, Aw, oh, did you get rejected by a cat girl? And he's like... <laughs> yeah, he did. So, you know, that's why he's doing it. Because he got rejected by a cat girl. Should've gone for the bunny girl, I'm telling you. Anyway, the Star... The, uh, the Yamato panel... Uh, what were the panels? A couple episodes of the... Star Blazers Funimation TV show. Of course, Space Battleship Yamato is actually what it's called. It's the sequel to the 2199 one. So yeah, it didn't make any sense. Other than it's the Common Empire beginning. It's a reboot. Um, so yeah, uh, it's clearly a reboot. Uh, so all the, all the other Yamato stuff from the 70s and 80s, it's completely, they just get to reboot it. Uh, yeah, uh, the... The, the, the change to the story is that the military guys used the, uh, uh, reinvented the wave motion guns things to use, uh, to make their military too powerful, and the uh, Gamelons are in their thing, and, uh, and their thing's powerful, and, uh, and the, the motto is under construction, but not ready, and the Comet Empire people are coming in the story, and, yeah, there's a lot of convoluted stuff. Uh, yeah, but, but basically, basically they're going to mutiny and take the ship, uh, which is which, stealing Star Trek uh, Search for Spock, kind of. Oh, well. And some dude came up to me just now out of the panel, and he's like mentioning the Baron, the, the voice of Teddy Ruxpin. Uh, he, he assumed that uh, I guess I, w I knew him, but I don't. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know he was around. Uh, I mean, yeah, this character uh, playing, I don't, I don't know them. I mean, it would be kind of cool if I ran into them, but no, I, I'm a fan. I, I don't know those people. <laughs> Come on, cosplay. <laughs> That'd be cool, but no, no. Anyway, so yeah. Um. Yeah, so we got the Moana girl, and then we cut to Spirited Away character. She gave me an idea to do that later. The foxtail. Ha ha! Yeah, that was very ingenious. I figured if they were looking for the guy in the hoodie, or they were looking for the guy in this Trek outfit, or the animal outfit, they'd never find him specifically, or the Taekwondo outfit in the next one. Yeah. There's a couple of times you see the Rick from Rick and Morty going by, but he's got his ham hat off. So it's like, some of these people were just like, uh, actually, there was the con guy. Yep, looking, it was the guy from the day, the next day, who was looking depraved afterward. Deprived and depraved. 
Scan mini arm. So yeah. Even though that's not specific. Yeah. Teddy Rux, but oh, there's, there's a, the cast of Game of Thrones with a uh, with a walker. That's pretty funny. I don't, I haven't seen the show, but that's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> and Fortnite, it looks like a little bit. Well, Fortnite is kind of like Game of Thrones. So Teddy Rexman was going to say something about Iliop and stuff and Gruffy and go on about that, but he decided not to. Instead, he decided to take pictures. Very strange characters from space. That's from something, but I don't know what. That looks like it's from a video game, though. So, is that a ticker outfit? No, it's something else. I don't think those two characters go together, but that's, that's funny, though. I like it. Well, they, they're together, but the characters. Mmm. <laughs> so, yeah. A lot of merchandises and wares and whatnot. But to get rid of the audio so you could not hear it. Because it would have been kind of weird. And strange. Con audio. Oh. Really? <laughs> or at least kind of creepy. Because Teddy Ruxpin. With his eye all screwed up. But yeah. Here we have a, a, sort of a Cubert looking thing. I don't think it is though. It's not Cubert. That lady looks like Mrs. Story. Background. A little short, I wonder. I don't think she was there, though. No, she is a she is a um, uh, um, a Pikachu lover. She likes Pikachu a lot. This girl, I don't know who she is, but she likes Pikachu a lot. So here is the uh, painted footage from this scene. Um, so it's uh, yeah, we have we have Kitty Key saying something about. Being in costume and filming himself. Felt like he had to do that a bunch of times. Unfortunately, the other shot of that lady looked like she was pinching a loaf. I don't think she was, but... Hmm. Actually, she totally was German. No, she wasn't. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that airship. Is that like a Hindenburg or something? Or a dirigible? It's a, yes, it's like a Hindenburg. And it's made with hydrogen, but on our planet, it doesn't explode as much, for some reason. <laughs> yes, in fact, Teddy Ruxpin is, is German. <laughs> oh, it's for kids that don't have any buddies. Yeah. So, I'm in front of the Goujon, over here. And I'm walking over to, maybe there's something going on at four. I'm gonna take this suit off and go back to the Kirk outfit. It's too hot in this thing. But uh, yeah, somebody <laughs> said something about ass. <laughs> he was like, oh, yeah. and he was like to his friend, it's like somebody said that, and I was like, <laughs> what? Okay. No. 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 So yeah, uh, he was trying to be insulting, but it didn't work because he just looked like. <laughs> I'm filming me, uh, but if you want to film you, I can turn around. So this cast filming some stuff, actually chilling after filming some stuff. And now we're coming down here, and we see the. There's the TV works. We've done anything with this as a kid. Because it's like. <laughs> It's a MacGuffin. It's not supposed to do that. Clint Cowboy's back. This here air. And I got the Teddy Ruxman down here. So, yeah, there, there it is. You can't see it because I got the video. <laughs> yeah, so some guy was asking me. So, there was a very special. And I don't mean special like special. I mean special. 
who he thought that I would find the voice actor of Teddy Ruxpin and have him meet him so we could meet at a convention. Yeah, like I'm gonna do that. <laughs> right. For you, who I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'm filming me, not you guys. Okay, so this is the. Excuse me. This is the Cthulhu for President panel that's going on. Uh, he was very snarky, uh, kind of like the South Credit History. Uh, and, and, and he kept telling people asking questions for them to leave because he didn't like questions. The guy wouldn't do that in a panel. Some of these people are special. <laughs> you know, so um, I wouldn't do that because they might be offended. But, but it, was, it was funny that he was doing it. Uh, yeah, of course, he was a, a lot. Flaming liberal who's making fun of Trump. Of course, even even the other guys got a bit. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> it is funny that Cthulhu would eat uh, any of the politicians that disagreed with him. That was funny. Uh, also, um, <laughs> uh, and and then he would make clones of and make and make people watch the suffering of the of people I wanted to keep around. Uh, yeah, so. But even though Lovecraft invented the other species alien and the Cthulhu, and, and there was Raktars in Star Trek, Star Wars, uh, even, even though uh, Lovecraft was racist. So, uh, yeah, he probably agreed with Trump. You know. um, but yeah, uh, just, anyway, yeah, so that was the uh, messed up panel. Yeah, so, yeah, so that was uh, con stories. It wasn't very interesting, really. Like last year, well, they did mention the drunk guy from last year. Oh, that was interesting too. <laughs> but um, but yeah, uh, so that was very interesting. Except that uh, one of them was apparently there was apparently a crazy guy at one convention that had like a toy gun. It was like an ass. But uh, yeah, that's a big thing. There was another one being a creeper to one of the con people. I, I didn't mention it, but I encountered that once before. The lady that played Callisto, other, she was at a convention and some guy like pit cat called her and she's like, ah, oh. and she's, her comeback was that Callisto would destroy me. And so would I. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> mm, the cow poke and uh, yep, I was at the convention. There were people protesting it. And, I, and then and we had one of us say, uh, I think it was uh, Kelly, he's like, Jesus didn't say anything about the, the costume and people. <laughs> Later on, one of them was a cat girl. Okay, this is uh, Gundam style, but we couldn't have, of course we can't use that music. G would sue. Gangnam style. And the Spider-Man guy is back. See, there was there was reference to that other episode. There. He's there, he's right there. And he's going crazy. It's a different Spider-Man guy, actually. It's more of a Star Trek Spider-Man guy. But yeah. Since Star Trek did have comics, and there are mangas of Star Trek, so technically, yeah, there's a manga ever since the Abrams one. So technically, there is an anime manga. Kind of looks like Jenny Pickett Stevens, but it's not. Um, let's see, we got uh, a bear. Distance. There is another bear here. Yes, but he wasn't Teddy Ruxpin. Uh, here is the cast of the uh, the, the new Guardians, oh, uh, with a lady version of Drax. All right, cool. Totally, totally, that that totally works. They're the new Guardians. Yeah. Good name. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. Huh? That's actually my name. Yeah, that's a good name. Where am I going to go to that? Where are you from? Uh, 
Yeah, so there's cow poke talking about, I believe, the protesting and such. But then, and then the convention, it being the end of day two uh, convention. Yep. That being town to mosey on now. Like a that, what I'm saying doesn't quite match what I'm saying on my lips. So that's probably kind of what I'm saying anyway. Well, get on out now. And this is my convention review of Fanime 2019. I'm a psychic teddy bear, so my lips don't have to move. Yeah, that's my explanation. I'm sticking to it. Hi, my name is Teddy Ruxpin, and you're watching convention where I have an adventure and it was quite an adventure however <laughs> as you can see that trying to walk the entire con is impossible when you're a teddy bear that's roughly two feet tall it's impossible so you have to get an airship to help you to, or some form of transportation Although the clumsy rolling cart on day two was a little too clumsy. People kept flat tiring it, running into the back of it. Hmm. For some reason, I'm starting to sound like I'm from Baltimore. That doesn't make any sense. Greetings, uh, uh, this is Cal Cat. The Cal Cat's turn. Near San Jose State. I don't have time to walk over there. Uh, but it's weird because right now... Uh, it's day three, Sunday, uh, the 26th for the convention. And it is now raining, but the sun's out. So I just thought that would be, uh, that, that's definitely magical space to uh, uh, illy up Teddy Ruxin power. Yes, Teddy Ruxin's very powerful magical creature. He, he knows about the airships and stuff. Yeah, of course he's a German teddy bear. And one the bar, yeah. That's right. Well, not really. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so it's like uh, the Comic Con with the Line Con years ago when it rained, as well as being like uh, <laughs> the other Comic Con where it was. Uh, uh, yeah, it's like uh, Bay Con. Yeah. And I never remember Fan Made 2013 Line Con. Anyway, so yeah, um, psst, that this is 2019, so there's no line. Anyway, so it, I'm going to get into the Togos, and then I'm going over to Macross Delta, premiering the movie over there at a uh, thing. Afterward is the Teddy panel. Okay. okay, the guys that were doing Pokemon is not 5th gen are not the same guys doing the Thulu for President gag for years. They've been doing that. Different people have been doing that. Uh, we just added them to the, to the subscriptions. And they have about as many subscribers as the Calcat show. So, yes. but the older channel, uh, the uh, the newer older channel, the Calcat show channel, with only twenty subscribers added them. Yes. So, I went to the Mario and Wario one. I went to the Mario and Wario one. But yes, um, here, uh, Team Rocket, and the Team Rocket, and and yes, uh, the the Mystery Spirit. That is, that is hilarious. Uh, Studio Ghibli and Team Rocket meeting at last. And also, that would appear to be, looks like Danielle Williams and her husband from the church. In cosplay. Exactly who that is. And here we have the other ones, and yeah, uh, the other characters. We don't know who they are, but they agreed to be in a picture as well. So yes, everyone agreed to be in the picture. Despite the one fan who came up and freaked out. And now a kitty key, putting on the kitty key belt. I said, oh, it's the belt. And it looks like I'm like taking off my clothes in, the, in public, but no, I had pants on already. <laughs> I 
No, I just want to take off my pants. It's so hot and bothered in here. I don't want to get naked. <laughs> Well, but the way I figure it, the ladies can walk around wearing practically nothing in the, in the space alien bunny bikini. I can do the same thing. It's true gender, gender free. I, I did go to uh, uh, the Togos, which had the gender bathrooms. They were both male female bathrooms, both. And I said to the lady at the, at the counter afterward, I was confused. I did not know which bathroom to go in. They said male and female. So I went on the one on the left. I hope it was the right one. <laughs> uh, but I said I don't, uh, I don't uh, identify as a girl or anything. But I thought it was odd. I didn't know which room to go into. So yes. Um, and it was just as skanky in that bathroom as it was in the other one I might have. Just to say not very well kept. There's the teddy bear. So if ever they saw the teddy bear, they knew it's the same guy, which is funny. And then also, we had some other fans of the Calcat show and, and the review show, mainly the review show, who also had teddy bear outfits or Garfields or other animals they were carrying around in anticipation of a glorious adventure. So there were others, like, that were probably pulled aside and told them to, to, told them to find their master Calcat and... And have him quit, like, walking back and forth down the promenade with that cart thing from yesterday. But the cart thing from yesterday was already gone, you see. So so they're kind of wasting their time. And, yeah, and, and Kitty Key is marching around doing the whole stroll. And there we have the man's. Yeah, so, yes. Apparently on the old bullshit, though, there were four Kitty Keys. Of which one of them was a former Jung Swan black belt uh, in pre COL. Another was a former black belt and not in COL. Another one was blue belt, and the fourth one was not in it at all, but was the sister of the other one that was the blue belt. So that's what happened. <laughs> so, yes, um, and they were on the demo team that the kid, the younger ones were, and they were hackers. But not Calcat, he's not a hacker. Anyway, we have, um, we have, uh, at some point, uh, actual uh, Mike Myers and Jason, uh, actual hackers from movies. But uh, that's later. Oh, there's, 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 uh, yes, some, some, a night and Fortnite and, and, uh, in the desert storm and uh, a creature, yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> that, that that that's actually pretty cool. I like that. So yes, um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Some pretty great costumes here. Yes, and there was one man who was freaked out over the taking pictures of the con people. And so I got their permission, and then he backed off. And I'm thinking that he was a little awkward, that he might have been in trouble for that very thing earlier. So he was like, so he was like, I'm going to go to the next person over and, and, and uh, just kind of pass the buck to the next guy, tell him not to do it, instead of just taking responsibility. Now here, now here we have uh, some other young, young people, millennials, possibly post-millennials, Yes, uh, here we have uh, this guy. Uh, yes, he's actually the Grim Reaper, or a, a Grim Reaper kind of character. The Book of the Dead. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, on the corridor of, of filth. No, the game room. I think I was talking about having gone to the Star Blazers panel, but there was music playing in the background. Oh, there's Michael Myers. The, the shape. He's behind me there. Yes. <laughs> he didn't kill me. Little, sh little, uh, not too tall for Michael Myers, or the shape is supposed to be taller than that. But oh, that could be a critique of a costume. In this case, mm, it's Michael Myers' assistant. So you can turn that around. See, as a fan of the stories from the old school days, you know. They would just give advice on how to make the costume look better, which is not a critique, but rather making it look better. So they would just say, 
Well, you need some platform shoes. <laughs> so you can look like you're six feet tall even if you're 5'10". Well, they think it's you paint the toy gun or whatever. I mean, look right. toy. Yeah, you can do a lot with silver paint, actually, with the stuff. It's kind of neat. Now, if you want to make something look metal, silver paint, and, and you varnish, burnish it a little bit to make it look aged, like 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 well, it's drying. That um, that's Star Fox again, or Fantastic Mr. Fox, but. Interestingly enough, fantastic Mr. Fox is Ms. It's a girl. Looks like it's that same group of Halo people. Let's go back for a second here. Okay. Okay, that's uh, a different a different group of people. Halo and Uh, next is Art Gallery. There's one of the con people. Oh, yeah, that guy was not security. <laughs> that wasn't the same guy. Okay, so she was doing something to, uh, yeah. I think she was there last year, actually, doing the same thing as the... Yeah, that, that lady was the, um, that lady was there last year doing the same pose, but as a blue princess from Disney. That was some um, dreams and memories and anime. Yeah, all of it was in Japanese except for this one part about them singing a song that was dubbed in English. Uh, there was one that would inspire deception. There was one that kind of inspired up. But it was inspired by water roll, very clearly, of going down into the water. And it's just, anyway, so, um, if there's anything else, anything. Next panel will be Make Anime Great Again. Yeah, so there we have, yeah, uh, that was, that briefly was Captain Marvel Man and Captain Lady Miss Marvel. That was funny. Too bad I couldn't get a close-up of them. They didn't want a picture. That would have been awesome. <laughs> Two of the early classic Miss Marvels. <laughs> Well, yeah. Well, there's a... Yeah. There's a dinosaur. Awesome. Any colorful costumes? Oh, there's... A, um... keep forgetting that show. Well, not Dragon Ball. It's the other one. Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! There's candy from the new candy store. Candy Kitchen. It's okay. I ate the fudge later, like afterward. I ate some of it while doing the videos and putting them together. It was not pot. <laughs> you have to point that out. Um, the joke panel by the people at Fifth Gen people. Uh, not the other people. I thought they were. And I looked it up just now on the internet. That panel was um, make make anime great again. It was the jokester guys from yesterday. It was extremely random. It was like the random of randomness. Uh, <laughs> different things happened that didn't make sense. Uh, creating anime to, to Saddam Hussein and the Libyan president and weird stuff like that. Coffee and yeah, so pretty strange. Um, yeah, so yeah, make anime great again. The joke. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and uh, Harambe is dead, whatever that is. <laughs> That's, you know, I don't know because it's dead. But. Okay, those guys were not related to the Cthulhu guys. They're just friends with one of them. They're not related. They're like buddies. They're... They're kind of like Channel Awesome was. They have like friends that all go to the convention and they do different panels. Yeah. Channel Awesome's still around. They just broke up into like little bitty Channel Awesomes. Yeah, they're still around. Some of their leftovers are still around. 
so there's a bunch of uh, characters going on here and then we uh, another character um, not Dragon Ball it's something else yeah there's Adam Savage the moment of Zen <laughs> I'm not kidding, that's actually who that is. Some other, um, discussing the kitty key, discussing some things. And then, uh, changing into another outfit. To escape the convention. No, not to escape, he wasn't doing anything illegal. Um, yeah, we're coming to the end of what is uh, this commentary, but there's a little bit more on the end here, as I explained about other other uh, crazy person on a train. Again. Uh, yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, the day convention. Day of the convention, yeah, day three. This is uh, the end of uh, Sunday. Well, it's not... Well, okay, that's it. End of Sunday. He... Uh, yeah, so... This is uh, the end of uh, Sunday. Well, it's not the end of Sunday, but it's the end of Sunday for this film shoot. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so, that's it. Sunday, day three, Fanime, and it is uh, sprinkling. Yes, so, yeah. I just want to report briefly on yet another crazy person on the train. We got on the Mountain View train here, and now I'm waiting at Tasman because it got off. It was like crazy. Shit, that's just so crazy. But that doesn't mean she's bad. I mean, she was crazy. She was like off on herself. There was no one there. She wasn't on the cell phone. She was just going off, telling somebody that she was the child of Justin Bieber, that her mother was her father, a sex change case, and it, and it, it, it just, she tried to make her fun or something. I don't know what she tripping. She tripping on something. She tripping balls. On something. What it was. Bath salts or something. So she liked it to, and she tried to take on this other guy. And he was like, he was like, what's up? And he got off. What? <laughs> anyway, at one point, some con goer thought that somehow I knew the voice of the animator of the Teddy Ruxpin cartoon series. That's impossible. How would I know that? Another con goer thought we were taking stereotypic photos of the con people, which we weren't. Yes, and this freaky little little vignette will be added to the, the con adventure. Because you didn't actually hear Teddy say anything, but did you? Or did you? <laughs> no. Yes, Teddy Ruxpin. And the con panel. So this is filming me. This is day four of the convention, the the Fanime Con thing. Uh, day four, uh, so far a little earlier, but quieter. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. Well, I'm not there yet, but we'll see. Uh, yes, uh, 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 Sap and uh, Sap Productions of characters were actually here af shortly after I got on the train, and they're here now somewhere. But uh, I don't know if we'll see them or not. Oh, we'll, we'll see. Probably. <laughs> All right, so yes, uh, the convention, of course, I was a little early, so looks like it's dead and there's nothing going on. But actually, there was. Uh, the Trekkie showed up. Uh, the the, uh, the uh, Creech character showed up, but didn't do the voice. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> so yeah, this, this Creech. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was the the. This is the one where the guy, the other guy, uh, was after this guy. Yeah, so there's some some costuming people that arrived in time to do their thing. Uh, they were, and there's uh, there's uh, Creech again. Yeah, he didn't actually say much of anything, really. He tried to in front of a table later, but people just sat down there with him. 
and sat, didn't talk to him though. They just sat down there with him. So there he is. Lots of pictures of Creech. On the table. I rather found all of the humans rather annoying and disgusting. But I was okay with it. Ah. I found the protesters on day three and day four rather annoying. Even more so. Psst. Partly because they misuse the scriptures of the Bible. Oh well. Teddy Ruxpin is not actually learned it anyway, so I know. Anyway, now I'm sounding more like I'm from Baltimore yet again. It's because it's kind of the same voice as Define. <laughs> Even though it's not. Then, then the con goer might say, It's Define. How could you get me to meet Define? To which I would say, Define died in 1988. The creator of Teddy Ruxpin died in 2014 or so. Anyway, so yeah, this is sort of a parody homage. Yeah, um, yeah. So I'm Teddy Ruxpin. That's my con experience. I really don't have much more to say about it, but maybe I will comment on the other venues. And such. Mm -hmm. The Taylor show was quite extraordinary. There were many fuzzy things in there, and I like fuzzy. things. In fact, I really like furries, <laughs> which may creep some people out, but after all, I am ba a bear, and I'm technically furry, so why wouldn't I like furries? <laughs> In fact, at one point, Silly Kelly dressed like a furry, but he wasn't. He was a furry friend. <laughs> also, Mr. Fox showed up, as well as other characters, including the Fanime Fox as well. And the other foxes. And the nine-tailed fox. There were a lot of foxes there. Because it was a silver anniversary and the fox was the thing. Did you know that? Okay, uh, yeah. The game room. And then on to the Wario and Mario guys. Wario and, and them. We had to cut out their rap because their rap was uh, copyrighted. So we couldn't use that. The background music was. Slaying the other three members of my barbershop quartet. And is now approaching me in a dark alley because this is where this fucking game takes place. <laughs> Think you can just show up like this? <laughs> <laughs> you had so much promise when we were kids at that orphanage for musically talented students. We were going to be adopted together. But then you pissed in the sink. <laughs> Family didn't want you, orphanage didn't want you, raised on the streets. You think you can come here and take my throne? I earned this! I'm awesome. No you're not, dude, don't lie. I'm awesome. Hanging around in your mom's ride? I'm awesome. Dude, a quarter of your life's gone by and you met all your friends online. You would run away from a brawl. I'm not at Smash. Good. You okay? Yeah, I thought we were doing more for this. <laughs> just, just, just. All right, beginning at six minutes and one second. Oh, two. All right, uh, here's the rap that they're doing. Uh, we could not show the rap because basically handed the thing to him and puts on the other hat and becomes the other guy, smart aleck about it, you know, and and it goes on about how awesome his rap is. Beat down here is. The other guy throws it, knocks his hat off, and then he's like, I'm going to do the rap thing now, and the rap is beat, and of course, because they are two white suburban guys, they, uh, the, yeah, they, no, uh, I guess that's the joke, though, because, like, although it was kind of fun, hopefully somebody has recorded this somewhere and has gotten permission to use the background music, but I did not, so this, this is not going to have that. And he basically uh, tells him off, and then, then uh, he proceeds to get the, the beat down to him. But of course, he's uh, yeah, white. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's doing. So, uh, and then he fell over. <laughs> yeah, they fell over. There he is. 
So that was the that was the Wario panel tent. Oh uh, so, uh, well, it's just a little bit more eleven. And yeah, it was just about uh, the, the Mario uh, tennis character. But they uh, there was the random guys from yesterday. So they were making like all these weird juxtaposition jokes, but putting him in everything from Murasaki films to, uh, to Grand Theft Auto 6, which is hilarious. Um, <laughs> other stuff like that. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> hasn't been released yet. Uh, no, no, it wasn't really. It wasn't really. They were just kidding. But yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, and, and they faked a Jackie Chan sketch, which they did with a sideways phone thing. They, but they said, yeah, so, anyway, so, and tail, a tail. We get a scene with the two characters. We get to do a little action scene uh, with, with pictures here. Of, uh, of the two of them beating each other. Does sort of a rematch outside after the convention. <laughs> that guy is, that guy kind of looks the part of Wario, actually. Wario. Right. Yeah, so he's. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't make any sense. He's falling forward. Oh well. <laughs> in, in video games, they do that. So here's a bunch of guys going dang, 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 to some music that they had to cut out. And then along came Shatner, Cat, Cal Cat, of course. I was there as well. And there was, of course, the, the uh, anime girls dancing and singing. We couldn't film that. Mm. However, the one dude that didn't get lucky with the cat girl probably got lucky with the green one later. But here is uh, Captain Kirk from the Chris Pine era. It's surreal, weird. Um, yes, um, and a younger version of the Ghostbusters. See, this is this is like the the reboot, in which they actually kind of uh, they're not related to the stories at all, uh, unless that one on the end is Drew. I don't think so though. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so that would be the this generation's correct Ghostbusters. Ah. See, they got one girl and three guys. That totally works. I like it. <laughs> that works. Yes, yeah, so, you know, hmm. well, I'm Teddy Rexpin, and I really have no idea who this is. And I got to pose in front of the, the cuteness god in the back. As you can see, the foxtail was also the theme. Isn't that wonderful? I'm doing a spot-on imitation of the guy who did the Teddy Rexpin, but clearly imitating. Now, oops. I'm sure I'll think of other funny things to say right here, but I haven't thought of anything new funny to say. So, perhaps for this clip, we can stop until I come up with something amusing and leave this in the movie, because that's, that's funny. Because it's funny. Maybe I'll think of something as I watch the slideshows and then go, oh, I should comment on that. Yes. <laughs> he looks very creepy, especially with the light behind him. Ah. And one of his eyes is slightly... Come dream with me tonight. <laughs> there was somebody dressed like the clown from It. Anyways, but I didn't get a picture of him. Kirk is posing with a bear. And he has a tail. So it was like this gag. See, he was basically the usual suspect character. But also a fox. So he's like going around the convention. And they're saying, how are you exchanges all the time? We can't find him. I'm trying to find this weird guy. But we can't find him. But the whole time, there was a fox tail on him. Every time. And when he showed up, yeah, it was actually him. <laughs> and they're going to look through the videos and go like, oh, wait a minute. 
He was right in front of us the entire time. The gag of the Usual Suspects movie is that at the end, the guy telling the story reveals that everything in the room in the police station, which is kind of nuts and doesn't really make sense, everything that he said could have been picked up from stuff in the room and it could be entirely be a made-up story. Yeah, it could totally be made up. So he gets to leave. Yeah. That was the object of that movie. And I doubt this younger generation's actually seen it. They should, though. It's a classic 90s movie. So here we have... Uh, uh, but... Um, well, if any of them are film geeks, they might have seen it. Yeah. Yeah, they might have seen it. So here we have... Um, Except there was no fox guy in that, but we have lots of the, the shirt tables and stuff, cute things, and the, the bread cast. I had to have that when I saw that. I had to have it. They didn't really have a gray one, did they? I would have taken a gray one. Well, they had a gray one, but it's a dragon, and he, he's not really a dragon. Mini plush. It's sort of a white one. Yeah, they didn't have a gray one. So I took the. I took the. Uh, Two bee loaf looking things. They're the Nickies, I think it's what they are. Two 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 Ks. They had other cat things. It could have got cat things that looked like cat things, but, but yeah, the little tiny plushies are, are funnier. And on on their website it says that that uh, anime store is closed. The anime uh, expo store, but have a website so I don't know they're clearly selling toys so if the anime palace is closed in Santa Clara are they just doing business as this I don't know they moved yeah they, they moved. so yeah um, yeah I didn't want to make the narrative slideshow the same as what's discussed in the other thing here we have a critter um, from possibly a Capcom game. Uh, there were actually quite a few Captain Marvels. So apparently, all those people complaining on the internet about the Captain Marvel movie had no impact on this convention at all. And people came as Captain Marvel because it was a made-up controversy and really people didn't freak out over it. They went to see it. Made a billion dollars. So they can... They can stop talking about it. Now, Captain Kirk here is pointing out that, uh, you know, if you want to get lucky, you have to pick and choose your hot chicks. And, and that it was a misnomer that uh, Kirk had the green girl, because actually it was Pike. He didn't know a green girl, but he didn't have her. So that's kind of what he's saying right here. Uh, also, also, he had a bunny at one point, bunny girl. Except I, he realized at the end that uh, it wasn't a girl, but he didn't care because it was the future, and he didn't care because he swings both ways. <laughs> so yeah, he's like, mm. that's basically what he's saying. Mmm, did everything. <laughs> Okay, so our artist Ali sign. Didn't really buy anything in there. Got like a pin. Oh, there's there's a, a my Jason. Yeah, Jason. Jason Voorhees, a taller one that actually kind of works. He looks he looks gigantic. Especially the way I shot him from sort of down, so he looked a little bigger. Because I think he was like five ten or five eleven. wasn't that tall. So I shot him from an angle, so it looked like he was bigger. Just how they did that Han Solo movie and trying to make that guy that was 5'10 look like he's 6'2. Kind of didn't work. We were not convinced that that was Harrison Ford at any point. Although the guy playing Lando nailed it. Of sin and wickedness, and you will come alive to God by faith 
and trust in Jesus Christ. Make no mistake about it. It's like, there's totally music playing right over here, but but the but the uh, protesters are out here screaming at the people who raise the straight gate and all that. He just doesn't say anything about the Jesus who didn't say anything about the thing yet again. Um, <laughs> And they were like, okay, you guys have to protest us. Just protest us. And nobody was. It's hilarious. Like, nobody cared. <laughs> and it's 16 seconds. Okay, I went over to the alma mater at the college. It turns out Sweeney Hall is now missing. It's literally missing. It's gone. There's another building across from it that they finished. Just, it's just going to replace it. But it's smaller than the old tower one. There's the other side. It's, it's gone. And there was already a rip in the wall here. Here's uh, Adam Brown Way and John Yeager Way. This way toward the tunnel. Beyond that, of course, they are named after us. Because, of course, they are. This used to be a Trinity Hall briefly in 2009 and 10, but now it's just blank. I guess they took his name off of it. It is still Uchimata Hall, actually. It's just really, really, really tiny writing. Okay. It's like, you just trying to put that writing really tiny inside. So, yeah. Uh, are they trying to make it look like a microchip now? Because that, those two buildings up there, they don't exist anymore. That's funny. Uh, Was over there, right? Sweeney Hall's over there, and uh, that's still there. A lot of them. It's the teddy bear. It looks like it's decapitated. And about memes and stuff. If you know that they did reference the Pennywise and it in the trailer for the Adams Family movie remake. However, in that case, unlike that other th other other video game, Mortal Kombat 11, mentioning woke, unlike that, it has been around as a as a book and a miniseries since the 1990s. So, yeah, they can mention the evil clown with a balloon. That, that's like pop culture reference, as opposed to Woke, which isn't really. Yes. We did a lot more shots of me in the, in the bag, just to like have me floating around and stuff, but well, most of them didn't work. So, yeah. Um, uh, it's not that it didn't work because people were interrupting. It just didn't work visually. Uh, we did it anyway, and yeah, there's a lot of these odd shots of this thoroughly messed up Teddy Ruxpin. <laughs> PDST bear uh, doing things, going back to the uh, con. Later to comment on the guy that was passing out hugs. I think that's a little later. Yeah, so there's Kirk looking goofy. I don't know what I was thinking. This here's Captain Kirk as a cowboy, because there was that one episode where he was a cowboy. He was on that planet. He was standing in front of this here thing here. Well, it's a giant snake, but it looks like a piece of poop. But it's supposed to be a snake. Big giant dog dookie. Mmm. Okay, what happened back there? Two things. Uh, one, there was a guy trying to get in the shot with his half-naked outfit, and I didn't want to do that. 
And then there's this other guy who was passing out hugs, but he wasn't creepy. He was like nice. He didn't look creepy or anything. He looked like a Santa's helper guy or something. And and I, and I said, well, that guy knows this, that the protester was still out there. So I was all, well, that guy knows the spirit of Jesus because he actually would give out hugs if they wanted them, of course. So that was the spirit of Jesus. Unlike that other guy who wanted to be prosecuted, persecuted so he could have people sued. Like, yeah, that's what Jesus would do. Totally, yeah. Like, dude, like, no one's going to come after you because they're all on to you. That, that's why. Uh, anyway, we're, uh, and that was one guy because the other guy is gone. The other dude that was protesting and, and cat, cat man. Yeah, that was me. Uh, yep, yeah, Lord Fuzzy Face. When Werewolf Fuzzy Face had told him you got you got dumped by a cat girl, he didn't come back. I think he might have been dumped by a cat girl. Yeah, so it's like maybe he did. Maybe it was a cat girl or, or something. And now he's given up on his fake religion version of fucked up version of Christianity that he's not following right. He's gone on to do better things. Or either that or he, uh, yeah, uh, Robert Stoner. <laughs> That's a different guy, though. Uh, there, there, there's uh, this have a the other uh, Pirates of the Caribbean guy. It looks a little more like him. Didn't sound like him though. He sounded like a baritone. But that's okay. He can not. He can not sound like him. He sounded more like the other guy. And there's Teddy Roxban having a joyous fun time. Yay! He's having a great time. He's psychotic bear. Oh, that that kind of works. That that shot actually kind of worked a little bit. <laughs> Notice that I did not crash into anyone at this point. And cowpoke there didn't throw me. I noticed he's wearing a slightly different outfit. <laughs> he has a teddy bear the whole time too. So really, they could have just said that was the guy with the teddy bear. But there were like other cow cats, and they had teddy bears that were different. So they pull over like six other guys, be like, no, wrong dude. <laughs> well, there's Cowpoke's hat again. Yeehoo! Going over to that singing event. Yep. Yeah, well, this, this could totally be made into a movie. Earlier, I was saying it couldn't. This 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 girl was was eager to have her picture taken. To actually, she really wanted to. I think it's a Harry Potter fan. Maybe not though. Maybe it's something else. It doesn't really look like Harry Potter, does it? I should probably know what anime that is, but I I uh, Hero Academia maybe. Cause that's awfully popular. Could be that. Which is school maybe. Did five. All right, so the cute things, the Teddy Ruxpin again. A lot, a lot fewer pictures of actual people in the fourth act. More of the bear. Uh, so action figures. Yeah, yeah, just proved the con adventure. This was this was more staggered to make it look like. There were more people, it's just that, it, yeah, they didn't do a lot of the in-the-show stuff. Uh, they did a lot of the action figures. A lot of plush things were on, on hand. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know why that particular rack was so intriguing. That I, well, I guess it is interesting that there's egg people and stuff, and hamster people. Yeah, yeah, that's the... Uh, it is it's all very bizarre and twisted. So this is the last stretch, really. Um, and so um, we're coming in on the home stretch, filming the characters. It's a witch again, or another one. Um, I think it's the same person. And then there's an Ash. Catch him. It's oh, there was no Sonic the Hedgehog though. I think that might have been on the first day. Yeah, I couldn't make any Sonic, and there was no Aladdin character, which tells you how how distanced from uh, reality they are. Making an Aladdin with Will Smith, there wasn't a single person rocking that costume. 
Yeah, there might have been a genie, but it wasn't the it wasn't the Will Smith one. It was yeah, it was uh, the Robin Williams. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, um, <laughs> but yeah, so movies you're not actually watching. Uh, here we have uh, was a Misty. Kind of looks apart. She actually was Japanese, or some variant. Uh, yeah, you could uh, make a horror movie out of some of the corridor stuff. Psst. It hasn't been any narrative. Yeah, I'm thinking two movies. So there's going to be like the Teddy Ruxpin Con Adventure, and then there's going to be a horror movie as well, and that'll be that'll be hilarious. Cause yeah. Oh. Ah. Oh wow, that's uncanny. Wow. They're actually anime girls, literally. That's it's, it's like kind of spooky. That's kind of awesome. I like it. Maybe the stories are right there. Ah! That'd be kind of funny. Uh, that, that's the crow from the other movie. I think that is one of the uh, Mirazaki characters that that crow is. Anyway, so yeah, um, coming to the end of this clip. That's. Yeah, narrative. Yeah, narration. So that's it from Fandome Con. Get on a train. <laughs> yes, my review of the convention. That there's rap music playing. That's my review. There's your moment of sad. <laughs> Have you know that the music there just wasn't the style of the sap people, so they didn't show up. But everyone, the J-pop and K-pop were having a war at one point. And we don't know which side won, because we left. But yes, um, they shouldn't have war. They should have peace. <laughs> the planet Iliop will invade the Earth. Well, I already tried that in the 80s. It didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, I look like I've got horrible PSTD or something. <sighs> Mangled looking. Love me. <laughs> Ooh, actually, ironically, ooh, of all the people, the, the three protesting people, one of them was probably merely smitten for one of the congoers and was dumped at one point, or merely rejected, as Calcat suggested. And also, the guy that was giving out hugs for free is more Christ-like than the guys that were complaining about it not being Christ-like to be there. Just thought I'd point that out. Because Teddy Ruxpin likes hugs. Even Teddy Ruxpin that looks like this. As you can see, Silly Kelly has re arrived on Earth again through the tra Trime Transporter. And he has this. And he's no longer holding a bag because Teddy has been returned to Iliop. Yes. So he's been returned to Iliop and I'm on Earth. Let's see. Due to time space dilation. This should be roughly a day after the 27th. When I went through the warp from Iliop. Should be the 28th. Yes. So, that was the Teddy. This is the raw. The raw. So, yes, that was the uh, Teddy Ruxpin adventure. And uh, the Khan adventure. And the other adventure. And yeah, that's the end. So until there's other ones. 
other adventures. Who knows? Maybe that mystery, particularly of the different projects in Mousetrap, will be repeated in space time once more. Yes. <laughs> Maybe. But you never know. Because it can happen again. <laughs> ah, I'm still in the shot. <laughs> I'm still in the shot. Oh, I'm not doing that right. Let me try that again. Okay, so, okay, we're gonna go this way. We're gonna aim that The giant airship is flying overhead right now. The giant airship. Anyways, uh, <laughs> yes, um, also it's kind of like a Japanese anime, manga, kind of, because you kind of wonder a character who's going through this thing, and he's like, this trippy spiritual dreamland thing. That's, that's what they do <laughs> a lot of times. So. Uh, the, the con is the spiritual fairy dreamland. So yeah, oh, that works. <laughs> Let's go to far off places and search for treasures bright. Come dream with me tonight. Let's build a giant airship and sail into the sky. Let's watch the ground so far below. Let's watch the birds as they fly by. Fly so high. Come dream with me tonight.